Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I'm excited about the show. We got two-year-olds coast to coast. Coast to coast, Matt. I love it. And you know what? We're talking Breeders' Cup juvenile preps here. We're talking grade one races here. We're talking one turn and two turns here. We're talking about Kentucky Derby, potential Kentucky Derby horses for next spring. So should be a fun show. Matt, we got three grade one races to, to talk about. So let's jump right in. Waste no time. We're going to start near me here in Lexington, Kentucky, Keeneland, grade one, mile and 16th. Of course, it's the Breeders' Futurity, 600,000, Matt. A nice field. Uh, well, let's mention right away that Timberlake there, the two, is cross-centered in two of these races. We, we we tried to figure out which one he's going to. We think it might be here at Keeneland, but we're not 100% sure yet. Uh, he's one of two for Brad Cox, Matt, and Timberlake has shown flashes of brilliance, but he's only won one out of three so far. Yeah, that is true, Brian. Uh, he broke his maiden in his second try. Uh, at Ellis Park for Brad Cox, uh, by, and, and he did it impressively, winning uh, winning by nine lengths, and then uh, went up to uh, Saratoga in Brad's barn uh, in, upstate and had the lead in the hopeful and finished second in there in a, in a in, uh, interesting kind of race in terms of uh, – the fact that race came back very slow uh, on the speed figures, but uh, you know, the, the track and all the bad weather in Saratoga was uh, probably a factor in that. Yeah. I, I, I like Timberlake's last two races a lot, Matt. Let me add that uh, when he did break that maiden easily at Ellis park, he did it over West Saratoga. West Saratoga has come back good, obviously since that race. And in the hopeful, there was just a, scr a, a real scrum of horses uh, involved as they turned for home. A real contentious uh, uh, pace there or, or early stretch battle. And Timberlake proved quite game, only getting, horse by, uh, only getting beaten by a horse who came flying late down the middle of the track. Nutella fella, Matt. So Timberlake is definitely one of the ones in your, provided he runs in the Breeders' Futurity. His entry mate I also like, Matt. Uh, his name is Awesome Road. Awesome Road has very little experience, but I really liked what I saw from the side of Quality Road in breaking his maiden. Yeah, uh, and again, another Brad Cox uh, maiden breaker uh, uh, at Ellis Park. Um, he did it in August by almost three lengths and uh that's been his only race yeah and and i've noted in that field at ellis park the second horse was a pole ahead of the rest of the field the third place finisher so awesome road i, I, th I think he was challenged by a pretty good horse in that debut performance he passed the test with flying colors flavian prot Flavian Pratt gets aboard here in the breeders futurity it's it's a it's a stretch to go from that sprint debut to a mile 16th grade one but i think awesome road uh I, I like what i see i think he will like two turns and i think uh there's a lot of talent here matt we're going to stay on the inside because i want to talk about the wine steward a little bit matt uh, i was a little surprised this is the morning line from keeneland and i was a little surprised at a couple of the horses odds in here one of them was the wine steward yeah i know he's a new york bred and i know he's coming out of a new york bred stakes race but Eight to one seems a little high for a horse who's undefeated and has won a two straight stakes races. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. I guess no respect for uh, the New York bred down in uh, in Kentucky. Uh, you should use your Northeast root influence there, Brian, a little bit uh, and, and talk to those odds makers. But yeah, uh, uh, all kidding aside, uh, I agree. Uh, uh, very nice uh, three races for trained by Mike Maker for the wine steward. Um, and, and in one of those victories, uh, I think of the most recent victory, uh, he beat another really nice New York bred, Al Grande O, who is trained by Linda Rice, who's going to be running in the Champagne. So we'll talk probably talk about him a little bit more. So uh, this is not your typical uh, uh 
run-of-the-mill New York bread. This is one of those New York breads that's got quality, and there's been plenty of them over the years. Yeah, and he's, he's done it at three different tracks. He went out to Kentucky at Ellis Park two starts ago to win his stakes race nicely out there. And that race at Saratoga, Matt, he had trouble. Uh, not only did he beat a good horse, as you mentioned, who came back and, and, and romped in a New York Red Stakes race out of that performance, but uh, he certainly overcame trouble to get the win there. So I think the wine steward, anywhere near 8-1 to one breaking from the rail with Luis Saez, the son of Vino Rosso, who we're starting to see uh, quite a few Vino Rosso two-year-olds this year uh, running well, uh, should be uh, well-suited to stretch out to a mile 16th. He is a player here, Matt. I don't know if I could say the same about Baytown Shatterbox coming off a uh, loss in the hopeful, but West Saratoga, he's the other horse I'm surprised with the morning line odds. West Saratoga, yeah, it took a while to break his maiden. We said he was well beaten by Timberlake a few starts back, but he's won two in a row, a nice maiden mile at Ellis Park. And he backed that up with a win in the Iroquois. Yeah, heck, Brian, he's a graded stakes winner, which is not something we can say about many horses uh, that we're going to talk about in all three races uh, today. And uh, 20 to 1, I, I can't believe that 20 to 1. And, and in reality, I can't believe that that's going to happen. Yeah, I have a lot of good things to say about West Saratoga. We both believe in horses developing, and he has certainly developed uh, here uh, uh, over his uh, several starts, and he's coming off a nice win in the Iroquois. The, the one thing I guess I could say about West Saratoga is that the Iroquois was not as strong a field as this breeder's futurity, and he'll have to prove it. But yeah, 20 to 1 seems like a stretch. Um, McPeak, Kenny McPeak often does well this time of year at Keeneland. He's got a couple in here, Matt. Uh, I'm a little bit more interested in generous tipper who uh, is coming off a nice win in his second career start. Brian Hernandez Jr., one of my favorite Kentucky riders, Matt, will uh, get in the irons on generous tipper. Yeah, and he was an impressive winner in terms of winning that race by uh, seven lengths, and he did it uh, going a mile. Yeah, yeah. Generous tipper is the one I like better of the McPeak horses. The other one is a son of flame away, Northern Flame. Can't completely throw him out. And I, I guess you can't completely throw out D. Wayne Lucas and Joel Rosario. Just Steele was part of that scrum, that battle for the lead early and into the stretch of the hopeful. But unlike Timberlake, he did pack it up a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, about the uh, Just Steele, uh, you know, I want to go back to his, uh, his maiden victory. Uh, you want to go back to one of the maiden races he ran earlier on. Uh, um, and in that race, uh, he ran, you know, he ran against and beat a couple of nice horses. Uh, uh, one of them lo it locked and one of them by you. And both of them are running in these races that we're talking about. That then came the hopeful and he was not one of the horses that uh, was in contention uh in that stretch run so you know that you know uh, puts question marks about uh that lucas horse but he beat some nice horses in that maiden race yeah he absolutely beat a couple of highly regarded pletcher horses one is in this field lock the other one bu is running out in california we're going to talk about soon just teal has a lot of speed and i expect he'll show it when he stretches out to a mile 16th uh, but there's other speed in this race, Matt. Let's take a look at the Timeform U.S. pace projector here. And you'll see that uh, they project Awesome Road coming off a debut win as the main speed. But you see fast pace and you see a few horses, including Timberlake, Just Steel, and the last horse we're going to talk about in a minute, Locked. All pretty close. Blinkers coming off Timberlake this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's hard to know with... Uh... These lightly raced uh, uh, two-year-olds frequently they'll uh, they'll they'll show speed in the beginning uh, in their in their maiden races in their maiden victories and and that's what the pace projector has to has to go on but you know now they're racing winners and it's a lot tougher going. It's a lot tougher going. It's two turns going. Uh, Locked hasn't shown a ton of speed in his first two, but he certainly showed more speed. Last time when he broke his maiden, Matt locked, of course, one of the Pletcher horses. Interesting that Pletcher has 
some uh, good looking horses in each of these three grade one juvenile races we're going to talk about. Locked had all sorts of trouble in that race won by Just Steele back in his debut. Good performance to get up for third, actually. And then he aired last time in his second start. Yeah, he sure did by more than seven lengths. And another one that has, you know, a little bit more distance under his belt, having gone a mile. Yeah, it was an impressive performance. That win at Saratoga, correct, uh, career start num number two. I'm a little surprised here how low he is on the morning line. But uh, an impressive maiden win at Saratoga. And, uh, you know, uh, trouble against some good horses ahead of him in that debut performance. That's the Breeders' Futurity, Matt. Three races, we're going to move quickly along. Let's go to California next. It's the American Pharaoh. And, of course, this will be at the same track that the Breeders' Cup Juvenile is at this year, Matt, a mile on the 16th. We see a field of eight here. And since we already talked about Locke last, last race, let's talk about Pletcher first this time, BU. BU is one of several maidens in the field, Matt, but I think there's some interesting maidens in this American Pharaoh field. And BU is probably the most interesting of all the maidens. Yeah, I guess that's a statement about uh, the condition of uh, racing in America that, you know, we've got uh, almost half this field uh, in a grade one big juvenile race, uh, and they are still maidens, but a little editorial editorializing there. But, yeah, BU, and I don't know if that's a play on the university that's across the street from uh, Fenway Park or not, but. It's Pletcher, it's Rapoli, they're shipping across the country, which is never that easy for uh, for a young horse. Um, still a maiden, but but as we go back to that maiden race we talked about already, uh, he did beat Locked uh, in that maiden race and came back to finish fourth in the hopeful can't imagine that Pletcher would ship all the way across the country unless they have a really good feeling about this horse. Yeah, BU missed by a nose to just lock, uh, just steal. As you mentioned, he was ahead of locked in that debut performance for both the highly regarded Pletcher horses, came back and was well bet and hopeful and was there most of the way, uh, hung on reasonably well to be fourth. Uh, could get a better trip here, could uh, like the stretch out this on a curling on a mile 16th. And yeah, there's a reason Pletcher out, has him out at Santa Anita one race before the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. BU, a very interesting horse. The horse that is expected to be the favorite here, you see our horse center odds, is Muth. Muth uh, was a $2 million two-year-old in training purchase earlier this year, Matt. And he kind of lived up to that crazy price tag. If he can live up to that crazy price tag, he kind of lived up to it in his debut performance, which came at Saratoga a few months ago. Yeah, uh, a big race uh, uh, for uh, for Muth won that maiden special weight by almost nine lengths. So yeah, I guess that's a pretty way, pretty good way of saying uh, uh, maybe two million dollars. Wasn't that ridiculous? Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And maybe not, because his next time out, he was heavily favored in the grade three best pal. This time he had pace pressure. He, after blitzing his maiden field, he had pace pressure at Del Mar. And he succumbed to his stable mate down the lane. He was second best that day in the best pal. But uh, no match for Prince of Monaco, Monaco down the stretch. Now he'll try to uh, stretch out his speed. His races has been spaced out a little bit. Obviously, Baffert's been high on him. The betters have been high on him. He's the favorite here, but there is other speed in the race. Uh, one of the other speeds in the race could be the four, his stable mate. He faces another highly regarded Bob Baffert train horse in Wind Me Up. Wind Me Up, though, Matt, is one of those maidens where I have a feeling he will come out of showing speed in his maiden and being a will be actually a little farther back this time in his second race, another son of Vino Rosso. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Vino Rosso is starting to, as we mentioned, starting to have a lot of nice winners uh, coming along towards the end of this uh, two-year-old crop. Wind me up. Uh, won that made special weight at Del Mar on September 2nd. So uh, um, uh, uh, coming back in just a month, uh, for a Baffert horse, uh, 
you're going to get better odds than this one than on the favorite. Yeah, absolutely. He'll be the other Baffert in the field, Matt. And uh, I'll tell you, there's a lot to like here. But what, while Muth is so much speed and the, the son of good magic, I expect to be part of the, the pace in the American Pharaoh or maybe setting the pace in the American Pharaoh. I think Wind Me Up is a horse who really wants to run two turns. In fact, he has good distance pedigree on both sides, being out of a kitten's joy mare. So I think Wind Me Up can lay just off the pace this time and, and might be a horse really wanting a mile 16th or more. And if that's the case, uh, being a debate debut winner, a nice debut winner at six furlongs is probably a good sign. Let's talk about some more of these maidens in the field, Matt. One of them is Next Level, uh, one of two for Keith DeSormo, Matt. And Next Level, um, he's over three, but he's running two stakes races. And the last one, he was third, decent third, in the grade one Del Mar Futurity. Yeah, and and you know that that that's a big a good thing for this particular field. If you've got some uh, you've got some experience, and you've got some experience in a in a Grade One race, which uh, Next Level did had in uh, uh, with his third place finish in the Del Mar Futurity, ten to one on the morning line. Yeah, and and he had showed some speed in his only race against Maidens, where he was a good second to start before. Probably developing, as Keith DeSormo trained horses tend to do. Uh, he was honestly not that close to Prince of Monaco in the Del Mar Futurity, but it was a good performance. Stretching out to a mile 16 certainly could help next level. Also, a fast pace could help next level. I guess that's true of his stable mate, El Magnifico, Matt. Uh, El Magnifico is 0 for 2, but he's bred to run long as well, the son of Street Sense. Well beaten in both of his starts, including by two of these horses in the race in Rothschild and Muth. But El Magnifico might be a horse just looking for two turns. Yeah, and a couple second second place finishes there. Two second place finishes. Let's look at the pace here, Matt. I got the time form US pace projector up. Again, that fast pace button is uh, lit up on the time form US projector here, Matt. They're saying the two and the four, two Baffert horses head and head on a fast pace. I don't know that I'm buying it. Uh, as I said, I think four might lay off his stable mate early. But I think the five, you'll see blinkers on the five. His name is Raging Torrent. He's shown plenty of speed going uh, in sprint races so far. He hasn't been as good as Prince of Monaco, certainly the last two. But blinkers on, stretching out. I think Raging Torrent might be the one that pressures Muth early. And coming from the barn of Doug O'Neill, and Doug O'Neill Neil's barn seems to be he heating up lately. O'Neill's had a couple of big graded stakes victories. He won the Cotillion, and he won another one, uh, a graded stakes race last weekend. So O'Neill's barn seems to be heating up. Um, as you mentioned, broke his maiden in July, but then was third in the best pal and fourth in the Del Mar Futurity. So he's got some experience. He's got some experience. He's got plenty of speed, stretches out. Doug O'Neill is good at stretching out these young horses. We'll see. I think it's a tough spot for him, but I, like I said, I expect him to show some speed. Uh, Rothschild was a nice winner of his maiden, but didn't really get it done last time in the Del Mar Futurity. He's also got speed. He's on the rail. One horse that I think could be a crazy long shot who could run a surprising race, Matt, is Indispensable. Indispensable was beaten by two horses in the race. He was third in his debut. He, too, is bred to run long. John Sadler, he was a very expensive two-year-old purchase for John Sadler and his group. And he rallied for third in that race. I think he might be a horse who has a future, especially at two turns. Like I said, broke poorly in his debut. Now he stretches out, and they put him right in the grade one. Might be a horse that could develop into, in, into a nice horse. He's also working quite well for trainer John Sadler. All things that you say about John Sadler, uh, uh, Brian, it sounds, sounds true to me. Uh, uh, Sadler uh, uh, gets a lot of good horses in that barn, and he's training well and he's training fast, and that's the kind of thing that Sadler does. Yeah, interesting horse there in the American Pharaoh where they'll all be trying to beat Muth, who we expect to be a pretty big favorite in the grade one American Pharaoh. Our last grade one two-year-old race of the uh, Saturday, Matt, uh, four weeks from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile 
or just about four weeks. I guess the Breeders' Cup Juvenile is on a Friday, so three weeks and six days before the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. We have the Champagne. The difference about the Champagne is that it's on the East Coast, Matt. Aqueduct, that's a one-turn mile at Aqueduct, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely is. So one turn, just like Belmont at Aqueduct. The other two races we've talked about are two turns. So these horses need to uh, prove next time out that they can handle two turns. But they're going for a grade one here. And I think the conversation has to start with fierceness. This is a Rapoli homebred fierceness. Uh, we plug him as a pretty big favorite off of a pretty big debut win. Yeah, Ryan, that's for sure. Uh, a, a big uh, a big victory. I think it was over 11 lengths. The word was out about this horse at Saratoga because he went to the went to the gate as the even money favorite. It was on a it was on a money track, but uh, fierceness just toyed with the field, uh, uh, got out of the gate smartly, got to the lead, extended and was geared down way, way early uh, in the race. And, and aside from that uh, uh, super impressive uh, uh, performance visually, he got a really good speed figure, uh, uh, one of the highest speed figures of the year for a two-year-old. And I don't think stretching out to a mile is going to be any factor, or for that matter, even if it was two turns, uh, Brian, because uh, this uh, homebred for Mike Rapoli uh, is bred to go long. He's by City of Light, who won the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile a few years ago, and is out of a Stay Thirsty mare. Stay Thirsty, we know, won the Travers and was second in the Belmont Stakes. So, uh, more distance shouldn't be a factor. Yeah, it certainly shouldn't be a factor at a mile here in the Champagne. Uh, I don't know if there was a more impressive two-year-old this year that's uh, uh, debuted than Fierceness. He looked the part of his odds, or, or maybe even more. And like you say, I think that's key here. He was really geared down early in that absolute blitzing of a maiden field at Saratoga. I read Ortiz Jr. jumps on after his brother rode him in his debut, but Fierceness looks like the one to beat. The horse that might be second choice is also coming off a nice maiden win. His name is General Partner. We actually have him at the third choice now, but Timberlake, that's dependent on where Timberlake runs. Uh, Timberlake, certainly, we talked about him a little bit. He's a threat if he's in here, but if he stays in Kentucky, General Partner could be the second choice. And he comes from the Chad Brown barn, Matt. A decent debut and then a much better maiden win in his second start. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, a much better maiden victory. At, it was at Saratoga. It was by about four lengths. And Chad's done pretty well in this Champagne Stakes, Brian. He's got four wins in the Champagne, I think, just going back to 2016. And he won the last two with uh, Blazing Sevens and Jack Christopher, a couple of really nice horses. Yeah, we're not sure if General Partner is that type. And you see a pretty big chasm in odds between Fierceness and General Partner, both coming out of big maiden wins. Uh, that's how impressive Fierceness was in his debut. And, of course, General Partners came in his second career start. Let's talk about that New York bred again, Matt. El Grande, oh, uh, Kedrick Carmouche will ride the New York bred. Uh, and a pretty experienced horse. He's tussled with the wine steward a couple of times. Hasn't been able to beat the wine steward but he gave him everything he wanted two starts back in a New York Red Stakes race. And then last time he won for fun. Six career starts, Brian. All six were top three finishes. Two wins, three seconds, and a third. Um, another interesting uh, New York bred. Um, you know, don't, don't discount this one as have, not having a chance to uh, continue with those top three finishes. Yeah, I, I think I do prefer the wine steward. Easy for me to say because the wine steward beat him in both starts. But uh, El Grande O is a, it, it looks like a very classy New York bred. And one turn, one mile might be good uh, for that New York bred in here. Let's uh, also talk about uh, a couple others in here. Matt Gold Sweep looked so good. It, it, it was early. It was five and a half furlongs at Belmont back in the spring. But he looked so good in winning that Tremont. A little disappointing. He didn't run terribly in two stakes, two graded stakes at Saratoga. 
but a little bit disappointing, honestly, for trainer Steve Asmussen. Yeah, um, after that maiden win in the Tremont, he went up to Saratoga and ran in the Sanford, uh, finished second. Had a little bit of an excuse there. Didn't get out to the, get out of the gate very, uh, very promptly. So an excuse there, but I didn't see much of an excuse for the hopeful, except maybe this track surface. Yeah, possibly. Uh, let's look at the time form U.S. pace projector here, Matt, for the Champagne. A different kind of race again at one turn, and there it is, fast pace again. These two-year-olds, they they show speed early, and the time form U.S. pace projector is uh, recognizing that. They say fierceness off that debut win is the speed of the speed, though. And then you got horses we've talked about, uh, Timberlake, possibly if he's in the race, General Partner, and El Grande O is the ones maybe who are the second, third, and fourth choice in here, but also the ones with the most speed to chase fierceness. Yeah, I think that's the point that you were you were making in there, Brian. This is a little bit of a different kind of fast pace. This could be a lone speed fast pace as opposed to a contended fast pace. Yeah, it's hard to know if anybody else has the speed to go with fierceness early again in this one-turn race at Aqueduct. Uh, Matt, one other I want to talk about. The other three horses in here, oops. The other three horses in here are long shots. Air Cap coming off a, a tough win at uh, Horseshoe Indianapolis for trainer Brad Cox. Sweet Sadie J has been running uh, against Lesser. He's undefeated at dirt, but certainly running against Lesser. But Dancing Groom comes off a nice win last time. Second start out, and he looks like a horse. If there is a contentious pace, Dancing Groom might be one of those who can rally. Yeah, could be. Got that maiden win. Uh in a going a mile in a race that came off of the turf yeah came off of the turf wasn't real fast but uh might be a horse who wants to run at least well we we know he wants to run at least a mile and and like i said he might be a beneficiary if the pace is very hot but there's a lot of talent out there up front matt i accidentally threw our top picks up just for a split second i don't think anybody had a chance to read them though but it is time for you and I to give our top picks out for these three grade one races for two-year-olds. Uh, we could be talking about these horses for a while, Matt. Kind of fun to do the show. Let's talk about who you like. We're going to go in order of how we did them. The Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland will be first. All right, Brian. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Timberlake. I, I, I have a strong feeling, although I have not seen any announcement, I have a strong feeling that he is going to run in Kentucky. He's training there. Um, seems like a seems like a better kind of spot. It's Brad Cox. Uh, um, I thought he's he got some good experience in the hopeful battling uh, in a contentious stretch race where he had the lead but didn't quite uh, get there. Timberlake for me in the futurity. Well, we're going the same way and we're going different ways, Matt, if you will. We're both trying to beat the morning line favorite Locked. Um, I, I don't think Locked has quite the, hasn't impressed me quite as much as at least one of the other Pletchers we talked about on the show. And I think he is beatable from the outside post as a pretty big favorite. I am agreeing with you in that I'm, I'm trying to beat Locked and I'm going with Brad Cox, but I like Awesome Road. I, I think Awesome Road is a horse who, did what he needed to do to win that maiden race. But I think there's a lot under the tank of this quality road. I'm high on awesome road moving forward. And we're going to find out quickly. He's working great for trainer Brad Cox. A lot of those workouts came over this Keeneland track. So I'm going to go with the second time starter, awesome road in the Breeders' Futurity. How about you and the American Pharaoh? American Pharaoh, Brian, uh, uh, Muth is, is a deserved favorite and it probably is going to be a Heavy, heavy favorite, as is the way of these kind of high-priced uh, Baffert horses. But I just can't go with those short odds. I'm going to take a shot with BU. I'm going to kind of do the in Todd I trust. Uh, it's got to be a reason that he's sending this horse to the West Coast. Yeah, despite being over two, Matt, I like him. And I, I, I like everything you just said. BU, I think, has a big shot in here. I, too, want to beat Moose. I, no part of odds on. Uh, coming off a well-beaten second last time in the best pal. He, he's 
very well could be the most talented horse, the fastest horse in the race, and Muth could win. But even money, four to five, no thank you. I'm going the other Baffert angle here. Another second time starter for me, but just like Awesome Road, I think Wind Me Up, wind me up is going to like two turns. Really feel strongly that this horse will get better with distance. We'll see right away in the American Pharaoh on Saturday. Finally, Matt, the champagne. We picked against the favorite in the two races uh, so far, but I don't think we're picking against the favorite in this one. I don't think so. I think this one might just be too good. We'll, we'll, we will hopefully get a feeling of just how good fierceness is uh, in the champagne. Uh, last weekend, we agreed on our pick and got a winner with Slow Down Andy. What do you got to say, Bri? Yeah, we're agreeing with fierceness on this one, Matt. The first of the three, we agree. I think it's going to be tough for fierceness, assuming he moves on to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, because that'll be in California. That'll be two turns. That'll be more speed. But in the champagne, I don't see any of those things. I see one turn. I don't see a huge uh, impediment for him. And his maiden win at uh, Saratoga impressed me so much. I can't pick anybody but fierceness in the grade one champagne. All right, Matt, we're moving closer to the Breeders' Cup. We're going to talk more Breeders' Cup as we go the next month. But for now, we did the two-year-old males, maybe Kentucky Derby horses in there, Matt. Let, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, Brian, it, 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 it's today's world where we got horses that are not only looking, they're prepping for the Breeders' Cup, but they're also looking to pick up qualifying points for the Kentucky Derby. Wow. Uh, it, it's it's racing in 2023. But yeah, these are some interesting two-year-old races, nice size fields, interesting uh, uh, races to be wagering on. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be out at uh, Aqueduct on Saturday for the Champagne and the five other graded stakes that day. Yeah, big big cards at all of these places. We, we went with the two-year-old theme, but Keeneland, Santa Anita all weekend. Uh, it, it's loaded at Belmont at the Big A. Uh, a loaded uh, pre-Breeders' Cup card, if you will. No Prince of Monaco, who is currently the Breeders' Cup juvenile favorite, but uh, I would not be surprised at all if we didn't talk about one the, the horse that's going to win the Breeders' Cup juvenile, Matt. We'll see. For now, we want to thank you for watching, everyone. We appreciate you uh, stopping by to check out the show. Leave us a comment. Make sure you turn on those notifications. Subscribe if you haven't done that. Thanks to Candace Curtis in the home office for our race graphics, our sponsor, Derby Wars. They're the best contest site out there. And of course, Time Form US for the pace projections we use every week on Horse Center. And thank you, Matt, for joining me every week. I always enjoy it. We'll see you all next week on another edition of Horse Center.